All right, I got it. Okay, the first problem I have is one Y. Oh, I think it's sorry. Right. It should lighter. have a, over a two. Lighter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Minus Y equals three. Is this a homework problem? Yes. All right. So there's a couple ways you can handle this. Now, do you want to clear out the fractions or you want to keep the fractions involved? Um, I kept the fractions involved and I changed it to a reciprocal. Okay. Multiplied it by the reciprocal. Okay. Um, me personally, I probably would, because I have a two right here, mm -hmm. I probably would multiply each term by two just to get rid of the fractions. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, uh, let me do it like this. And I'll cancel out my twos. So I have y minus 2y equals 6. And so if you multiply each term by, the, you know, the least common denominator, um, okay. you can get rid of your fractions. Okay. And that way, just, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Thanks for this question. Because I, <laughs> I, had, I, was, <laughs> I had a question on this too, but I didn't know to ask. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> how you gonna how you gonna interrupt her with a with a almost of a question and then because I was gonna ask the question, ahead. but it's the next step, so I just gonna let you finish. I'm sorry. Okay, you all good. It was just funny because he was like, you know what, go ahead, just um. So then from there, you can uh, combine your like terms, and that'll give you negative y, and then take your negative over. Y is equal to negative six. And what I was saying, I had a problem with that, but I went back and I got the six, but I forget to always move the, the negative sign. Mm -hmm. So it marked it wrong. That's what, so I was like, I had broke the question out all the way to part, part and I couldn't figure out why it kept, because I didn't have negative. Oh yeah, that'll get you. Most I definitely. had to carry it over. Mm -hmm. Well, do you got anything like you can tell me to try to remember? Ah, uh, well, you can't, well, on that, I can make sure that, you know, you can't lose that fact that you had that negative there. Um, because you're not solving for negative Y, you're solving for Y. So if you have a negative sitting in front of your Y, then you have to get rid of it. Because uh, that, 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 that negative sitting in front of Y, you might as well have five sitting in front of your Y. Because that negative is not solving for the actual Y itself. You want to get Y by itself, not negative Y. Um, yeah, the only thing I can say is just make sure you hold on to all of your, you know, to your negatives and everything so that when you get down here, you're not losing, you know, you see that, hey, I still have something in front of Y that I need to get rid of. Okay, because I've always forget it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I got another one. Uh huh. It's one third minus six fifth equals M over 15. All right. And before I go there, I saw somebody say something in the chat. Okay. I'll get there in a second. All right. So here, same uh, type, type of situation. We're looking at um, least common denominators. At least that's what I would do. Uh, once again, if you want to hold on to these and do the fractional work, um, you can. Uh, but I would look at three and five and see that I have a LCD. A 15. Yep. And then I will multiply each term by that 15. All right, three goes into 15, leaves you with five. Five goes into 15, leaves you with three. 15 goes into 15, cancels out completely. Five times one is five. Three times six is 18. And then we just have M over there. And then five minus 18 is negative 13.
All right. How was that, Ms. Chambers? That's good. Straight. Yes, it is. Okay. And I have two more problems, and then I'm done. All right. So I had somebody in the chat that gave okay. one. So let me get his, and then I'll come back to you. Try yes. to, you know, try to be fair, you know, with all, you know. Yes, sir. So let me see. We got 17x minus one fifth minus 16x. One fifth plus two fifths. Make sure I got it right. Minus 16. All right. So here we have 17x minus one fifth minus 16x equal one fifth plus two fifths. Now, this one uh, a little bit different than the ones we dealt with because notice none of these had common denominators. Uh, neither did they have like terms um, with common denominators. So what I would do is simplify this first before I get rid of that uh, fraction. You know, 17x minus 16x is just 1x. And then over here on the right, 1 fifth plus 2 fifths is 3 fifths. And then now that I look at this, I have 1 fifth and 3 fifths. We have, we have common denominators, so I can just go ahead and add the one fifth to both sides. See, when everything has common denominators, there's not uh, that much you know, of an issue going on. So one fifth and three fifths is four fifths. Doesn't call for as much work as it would if they were uh, different denominators. Now, if there were different denominators, then I would go back to what we did in the previous two, where I would find the LCD and multiply each term by the LCD. But like I said, because we had, you know, this common denominators for each, and we could simplify things, you know, by adding like terms, it was just easier in this case to just simplify and just solve. All right. Was that a sneeze or? <laughs> no. no, it was my phone. Sorry. Oh, okay. I know. <laughs> Did it say? It? <laughs> okay, no, I'm not. We supposed to be recording. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, sound like you said yay or something like that. I don't know what. That... <laughs> All right. So, next one. Uh, um, Miss Chambers, right? Yeah. Yes. Three Y. Um, I think parentheses y minus five equals y minus 15. I got kind of confused on these. I think these are the ones that you end up with zero. But okay. I got confused. So, so now you said three y parentheses is three y plus the parentheses? Like, no, or? no, it's minus. So, Just like this. Uh, are you looking at something you've written or are you looking at my math lab? I wrote it down on my Some math. You're missing something right here because we're not, we're not doing that yet. So what you're about to do is create a quadratic equation when we do this. Oh, I'm sorry. Take, would... out, take out the Y. What okay. Is three sorry. Okay. Three. Cool, cool, cool. I'm about to say, hold up now. We... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Like, hold up. Maybe I forgot what I taught. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's better than that. Okay, we got three times the quantity of y minus five equal to y minus 15. So uh, we distribute. Mm -hmm. And three y minus 15 equal to y minus 15. And if I subtract y from both sides. 2y minus 15 equal to negative 15. You add 15. And that goes to cancel here. But like you said, that also cancels here. So it's 2y equal to 0. Divide by two, and 
y is equal to zero. And so, that it, mm -hmm. I got a question. So yeah. does it matter which, so I know you did the y's, I did 15. Does it mm -hmm. matter? Mm -mm. As long oh. as you hold true to the process. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why I did that um, way is because it's more, teaching this is visually better is this way versus me going, you know, doing like you did. And mm -hmm. basically you would have had three Y equal to Y. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, just from my experience doing it this way, was just easier visually for people to get the concept. But yeah, it's the same thing. When you subtract Y, you just got to remember though, you know, that cancels out to give you zero. And you still would have had two Y equal to zero, which is what we had right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think a, a lot of times, though, you know, people get afraid to cancel out variables. I don't know why, but <laughs> they get afraid to cancel out variables and let that turn into a zero right there. Um, so mm -hmm. that's why I do it the other way, which, you know, just trying to give people a visual, you know. Um, zero always scares people, especially I, when geometry. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think you're right there. I think. <laughs> well, yep, yep, yep. Um, so everybody good with that before we go to the next one? I believe she has at least one more Any questions. All right. And my last one was 3T mm -hmm. minus 7 mm -hmm. equals 4 parentheses T plus 4. Pretty much the same as the other problem. Mm -hmm. No worries. So, distribute. Four t plus sixteen, and you know, just like before, it doesn't matter which one you move. Um, so that'll be three t. Equal to 4t plus 23. Subtract 4t. So I wanted to have a negative exponent. Mm -hmm. One more time for the birthday girl. Hey, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have. Minus, that's a negative exponent, negative variable. So uh, we have minus t or negative t is equal to 23. And once again, take that negative over. And t is equal to negative 23. Make sure we are OK. Anybody uh, think of any problems? If you didn't have one specifically, think of any problems that you remember from the notes that you want to see again. I just got to remember that negative sign. Mm-hmm. Go back here. Um, where's my book? Do at least one like this. Can you do an example when you're solving for a specific variable? Yep, yep. Let me copy this down too. The 
inequality, isn't it? Mm hmm. And let me find a specific variable problem real quick as well since I'm looking. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so let's do this one since I was already there and then I'll get a specific um, variable problem. All right, so I just wanted to reemphasize that uh, if you're solving um, inequalities, then you do that the same way you would your equations. And just want to put a little extra on it, so I found me a string of operations. I know you guys you know love to see stuff like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is distribute. So that'd be three x plus six minus six is greater than negative two x plus six plus fourteen. Now, before we move anything across the inequality, you know, we want to simplify as much as we can over here, simplify as much as we can over here. Um, that's how I, you know, like to go ahead and do it. Now, it wouldn't hurt anything if you decide to move things now. It's just that, um, to me, to clean it up, this would be the easiest way to go ahead and do it. And we and see so that, uh-huh, somebody saying something? Yes, I was about to ask you, when you say rearrange and move things around, you're talking about moving the variables together? Yeah, when you go and start moving stuff across, the, yeah, uh -huh. when you start doing that. So I was saying before you move stuff across the equals, I mean, equal, whether it's equal sign or inequality, before you do that, combine your like terms on each side first. So, okay, so basically six plus 14. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So on the left side, the six minus six cancels out. What is it? Just three X. Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, we'll have negative two X plus 20. Okay, got it. And then I will add two x to both sides. Maybe five x is greater than twenty. And divide both sides by five. We still on homework? Say again now? Are we still on homework or is this a new lesson? Say that one more time. Is this homework or is this a new lesson? Oh, no, no. It's a review problem. It comes out of section 9.6. X. X equals 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so don't forget, uh, we have X is greater than 4. Don't forget, they could ask you um, for two other pieces, you know, your graph which is four, we're talking about the values that are greater than four. And don't forget, you should be using the parentheses when it comes to your, uh, let me do it like this, I'll just say parentheses. When you're using the greater than symbol, you should be using parentheses, so put the parentheses over the four and then shade to the right. And then your interval notation, you're going from four, you're going from four to infinity. So it's four common infinity and then parentheses. So you should be okay with, you know, those three answers, those three. Before we solve for specified variable questions on what we did there. Okay. 
All right, so we have S equal to 4LW plus 2WH, and we want to solve for H. So the goal is to get H by itself. And so that means we need to move everything else to the other side of the equation. So first thing we'll do is subtract 4LW. So that's S minus 4LW. Now you can't combine them because they aren't like terms. Uh, so all you can do is write S minus 4LW and that's equal to 2WH. All right, that's all sorry. Just a moment. Run, run that again. Yeah, because hmm? I'm a little confused. <laughs> all right, what, what, um, what's up? So you just cancel out the variable that doesn't have uh, the specific, the specific, <laughs> the specific one you're looking for. You what, cancel that first variable out. Well, this is what we did. If I had seven equal to four plus two h, what would I do first? You get rid of the four. I would minus four from both sides, right? Right. That's all we did. Right. Seven from. No, no, no. I said if, if, oh, if I had this, what would my first move be? So if I had this scenario and I'm solving for H, my first move would be to minus four, four right. on both sides, and that's what we did right here. We just minus. It's a four LW, but it's the same thought process. Okay. So my goal is to get H by itself. So the first thing I did was whatever was being added to the quantity that had H in it, I subtracted it from both sides. All right, so does that, does that make sense? So you need me to re-explain? Yeah, or do another one maybe or something, because I didn't get that. We are not even finished with this one. I gotta, I'm, we're not finished. Oh, I'm thinking that was the answer. No. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I thought it was. Okay. Let's <laughs> see. I was trying to pause and let you guys write it, but then if I if I move too fast, then you know y'all be asking me to double back. So I was trying to. Oh, I thought it that was the answer. I'm like, well, what? How? <laughs> no, because you know, remember your goal is to get H by itself. All right. So we still got to finish that off. But is everybody okay with the first step? So yes. All we did was minus the quantity that had nothing to do with H, and we took it to the other side. And so now we have two WH, that's two times W times H. So we're gonna divide both sides by two W. So the twos cancel, W's cancel. And that leaves me with just H on the right. And on the left, we have S minus four LW over two W. <clears throat> All right, questions on that last one before we look at another one. She asked for one more. All right. So don't forget, you're supposed to be treating these letters the same way you would numbers. You don't know what these letters are, but they do represent numbers. So the process that you would take if they were all numbers is the same process you would take, you know, when you see these letters, because like I said, they represent numbers. So try not to let the fact that you have letters, uh, you know, sway you from what the normal process would be. So here I have V equal to one third AH. And I want to solve for capital A. And don't forget, um, you know, they give you capital A, they give you lowercase h, and they give you capital V. 
then when you input your answer, you have to use capital V, capital A, and lowercase a. You can't put lowercase a in there and then expect them to mark it, mark it correct. They will not. All right, so hold true to whatever letters they give you. So we have V equals to one third AH. So what I would do is multiply both sides by three to get rid of that three in the denominator. So that three and that three will cancel. That'll be three V equal to A H. And that's A times H. And we want to get A by itself. Divide both sides by H. Three V over H. Oh, okay. So that's actually, that would be for sure. Okay, I got it. Uh, I think I saw another one in the chat. Uh, I think about a year. Two thirds plus Y. Negative. Right, two. All right, any questions on the last one before we look at uh, this one? Now, this one um, is up to you if you want to clear out your fractions. I think I'm getting feedback from somebody. Uh, yep, yep, one, two, one, two. All right, yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, here, uh, since why I solved already, well, I won't say it's solved, why is by itself, I would just go ahead and subtract two thirds on both sides. But if you want to multiply, you know, each term by 18 uh, to get your, get them, you know, just regular linear equation, then that would be fine. Just know that you'll have 18 right here that eventually you'll have to divide back over. Um, just up to you and what work you want to do. But uh, that's why I said math, you know, should be about you reacting to your situation, not necessarily always trying to think. That's why you got to get, you know, practice and reps in because the situation that you're presented will dictate what moves you make. But you won't get comfortable with those moves until you really get enough repetitions in. Um, so that's why it's important to get those reps in and get the practice in. So now that we have negative five over 18 minus two over three, you know, our LCD is 18. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom here by six, which turns that fraction into negative 12 over 18. So now I have these two fractions to add together. So negative five over 18 minus 12 over 18 will be negative 17 over 18. Oh, wait, five and twelve, you get together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same sign, yep. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Anybody else? Everybody good. <clears throat> so next class, we will be getting into graphing. Uh, that's chapter 10. Um, yep, yep, yep. So that's 10, one for us. 10, one through 10, five, let's see. 
Okay, we got through all the sections of chapter 10. Okay, 10, 1 through 10, 6. Uh, yeah. So before we close out today, no one else have any questions? Very right, good, everybody straight. And so, like I said, don't forget, guys, that um, if you uh, find out you have a lot of questions and you need to set up a Zoom session, that, that you know, option is available, you know, just basically office hours, you know. So, um, you know, and we'll uh, knock it out. So if no one has any questions, I wasn't going to do anything new today unless someone, unless y'all didn't have any questions then I wouldn't have a choice but to either jump into something new or to figure out what kind of questions that, you know, just put on the paper. But um, I won't jump into chapter 10 today. We'll do that on next class. But um, the door is always open to ask questions. Remember, you are taking the test on your own time at your leisure. But, you know, you don't want to wait too long and get too far away from, you know, as far as lecture is concerned, get too far away from, um, you know, chapter nine. You know, you don't want us to be in, what, do you go to chapter 11? No, you don't, it goes from 10 to 12. You know, you don't want us to be in chapter 12 and you still haven't, you know, made your first attempt on, you know, test one. Also, don't forget how the tests work. Um, there really isn't a limit on how many times you can take the test. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a limit on how many times you can take as far as your, as far as your time is concerned. You don't want to waste a whole bunch of time taking one test 10 times because, um, you know, you got other things to do, of course. So, you know, you take the test. If you don't get the score you need, you know, I believe we're looking at 75, yeah, 75 success rate, 75 percent. So you want to at least get that 75 on it. So uh, if you don't get that 75 and you need to go take it again, then what you would do is uh, get with me and let me know about, you know, your request to take it again, and then we'll go from there. After the second attempt, then, um, you know, we have to sit back and make sure you don't have any questions because, you know, you don't want to have to take it a fourth time. Uh, but hopefully everybody will knock it out on the first shot. But there really isn't a limit on how many times you can take it. It's just that, you know, you got to make sure you, you know, get cleared and go through Mr. Davis and all the good stuff like that. All right. Any no. questions? No. All right. Yeah, I have one question, Professor. Yes, sir. Uh, um, the answer to the last question was negative 12 over 18, right? Negative 17 over 18 because we added those two fractions together. Well, let me see. If, am I still sharing my notes? Yes. So we added these two fractions. It was negative 5 and negative 12. They gave, gave us the negative 17. Yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah. So uh, we, it was a process to make sure that they were combat compatible. Remember, you cannot add or subtract fractions with uncommon denominators. So that's what we, that's why we did that, uh, so that we had common denominators between the two fractions. But once we had those common denominators, we added the negative five over eighteen to the negative twelve over eighteen. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So you guys uh, take care, have a good one, and I will see you on next class. All right, thanks. All right, thank you. Not a problem, take care.